2021 was a return to normalcy for much of the airshow industry, with thousands of hours of air displays taking place around the world. In this two-part programme, we'll focus on the very best of the action that made 2021 stand out from any other year. In part one, we focus on the best of the year's military airshow action. Among the highlights, the Blue Angels' first display with their new Super Hornets, and a host of new airshow acts, including the two Mirage 2000s of Gusto Delta, and the Polish Air Force's C-130 demonstration. There were special schemes and heritage flights aplenty, and the 100th anniversary of the Royal Australian Air Force features strongly with special flypasts and the final ever airshow appearance by an Australian Legacy Hornet. Part 2 is dedicated to Warbird airshow action. One of the highlights is Air Ventures reenactment of the entire Second World War. Some of the year's most unusual Warbird gatherings included a three-ship Corsair aerobatic display and a performance of 13 B-25 Mitchells at Thunder Over Michigan. We'll visit Lejno for a stunning sunset performance by the Flying Bulls and see some of the newest Warbird acts on the circuit, including the Ultimate Fighters aerobatic team and Peter Teichmann's Russian Spitfire. This is Airshow Action 2021. If you enjoyed this programme, you can see unnarrated, uncut videos from many of the North American performances on the Airshow Stuff YouTube channel, as well as a 45-minute roundup of AirVenture 2021. And each of the airshows we've featured from outside North America are the subject of their very own Airshow Dispatches films. The full series is free to view at thisisflight.net forward slash videos. One of the most memorable moments of the 2021 display season, and indeed one of the most ambitious air displays held anywhere in recent years, was a complete reenactment of the Second World War involving more than 40 aircraft at AirVenture. The intention had been to stage this display in 2020, marking 75 years since the end of the war, but with the cancellation of AirVenture that year, the performance was delayed until 2021 instead. We start with the Battle of Britain and a Spitfire Mark 9 and Hurricane Mark 12 from the Dakota Territory Air Museum. The next aircraft was a TP-40N Warhawk American Dream, representing the Burma-based American volunteer units known as the Flying Tigers, which helped slow the Japanese advance through China and Malaya in 1941. The United States was drawn properly into the war with the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December of that year. The Commemorative Air Force has a designated display team which exists purely to tell this story, Tora Tora Tora, and that is what we are watching here. They use a variety of T6 Texans and SNJs modified to look like Japanese Mitsubishi AM6s, Nakajima B5Ns and Aichi D3As as well as one playing the part of a defending Curtis P-36 Hawk. The first major act of revenge came in 1942, the Doolittle Raid, when 16 B-25s set out on one of the most ambitious bombing missions in history, bombing targets on the Japanese mainland. Although the damage from the raid was minimal and most of the aircraft were lost, the raid played a huge psychological role in the war, proving that the Japanese mainland was not invulnerable to American attack. 
This Catalina represents the Battle of Midway, a decisive American victory over Japanese naval forces as they attempted to attack the Midway Atoll. It was Catalinas like this one which spotted the Japanese fleet advancing, giving US forces a crucial advantage. Next, legendary warbird pilot Steve Hinton took to the controls of P-38L Lightning Scat 3, commemorating the successful ambush of Japan's Admiral Yamamoto in April 1943. US intelligence had intercepted plans for Yamamoto's tour of the South Pacific, and a squadron of P-38s, modified with disposable drop tanks for added range, succeeded in shooting down his aircraft over the Solomon Islands. A fleet of P-51D Mustangs represented the major air battles in Europe, as well as demonstrating their role as escort fighters with the bombers of the US 8th Air Force. Lee Lauderback also performed a superb solo display in P-51D Crazy Horse. We're only taking a very brief look at this whole performance, but if you want to see more, and indeed see more of all the other performers at this year's Air Venture, there's a special 45 minute programme on the Air Show Stuff YouTube channel. Once air dominance had been achieved over Europe, the Allies were able to launch D-Day, or Operation Overlord, to liberate occupied Normandy and commence a long and bloody year of land battles across the European lowlands. Over 150,000 soldiers were deposited in Normandy on the 6th of June 1944, most of them arriving by sea on almost 7,000 ships and landing craft. The aerial operation involved around 2,000 aircraft, with more troops arriving by troop-carrying glider as well as taking part in massive parachute drops, jumping from C-47 Dakotas like these. By the end of June, almost a million men had arrived in Normandy, and victory in Europe would only be a year away. But the war in the Pacific was raging on, and one of the star fighters emerging in that theatre of operations was the Corsair. As well as fly pasts by a pair of Corsairs, we also saw one such aircraft performing with a P-51D Mustang as part of the Class of 45 aerobatic team. Finally, the dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was re-enacted by a B-17 Flying Fortress, playing the part of the B-29. The World War II performance ended with a quartet of warbirds, B-25 Mitchell Betty's Dream, P-51C Mustang Lopes Hope III, and P-51D Mustang Miss Kitty, along with a Sea Fury FB-11, a curious addition given that particular type didn't enter service until after the war had ended. Although neither of the world's two flying B-29 superfortresses were able to play their rightful part in this performance, we did get a chance to see one of them, B-29 Dock, at Thunder Over the Heartland in Topeka. So for the sake of completeness, here she is.
The Second World War display at Air Venture was certainly one of the most memorable airshow reenactments of recent times, but some shows like to do things a little differently. It's common at air shows in France, for example, for the entire flying display to be arranged in chronological order, and one of the country's newest air shows, air legend Paris Villaroche, is an excellent example of this. We'll look now at some of the historical highlights of that event, which told the story of military aviation from 1939 until 1970. Taking a starring role was the world's only flying EKW D3801, the Swiss license-built version of the Morin Saulnier MS-406. This aircraft is owned by the Association Morin Charlie Fox, but sadly their regular pilot, Daniel Coblet, passed away in 2020. It was feared the aircraft would be sold or grounded, so it was a pleasure to see the aircraft displaying once again in 2021, now in the hands of Laurent Calam. This year's show had a particular focus on the war in the Pacific, marking the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. The show began by demonstrating some of the routine activities that may have taken place, with a PT-17 Stearman and Plain Sailing's PBY-5A Catalina performing mock training flights, with the enemy gathering in the distance. There's no dedicated Pearl Harbor reenaction team in Europe, so the show's organizers had to make do with a sundry assortment of T6 Harvards to play the part of the Japanese aircraft. Chris Prevost, in a P-40N Warhawk, then took off to chase away the last of the Japanese invaders, before commencing a solo aerobatic display of his own. Although he hails from California, where he owns several of his own warbirds, Chris only flies at air shows in Europe. In this case, he's piloting an aircraft from the Amical Jean-Baptiste Salis, a huge warbird collection which also organises its own highly acclaimed air show at La Ferté Allée, just a few miles down the road. The end of the war in Europe was marked by this rather interesting and historically accurate performance featuring an L4 Grasshopper and a Fiesler Storch. It's actually a Morin Saulnier MS505 Criquet, but never mind. The story goes that on the 12th of April 1945, a pair of American pilots on a reconnaissance mission over Germany spotted a Fiesler Storch. The two aircraft flew at each other head on, only narrowly missing, when the crew of the Cub decided to engage the Storch with the only weapon they had to hand, their revolver. 
What followed was an utterly bizarre and remarkably low speed dogfight, which is said to be the final aerial engagement of the Second World War in the European theatre. It is also the last known case of an aircraft being shot down with a handgun. The stork, streaming smoke from its engine, was eventually forced to crash land in a field. But back to the Pacific theme, and it was time for one of the most anticipated warbird gatherings of the year, with three F4U Corsairs paying tribute to the Black Sheep Squadron, a hugely successful, if somewhat undisciplined unit, immortalised by the television series Barbar Black Sheep. Initially, the three Corsairs did battle with a pair of T-6 Harvards, modified to look like Mitsubishi AM6s. They then split apart for a superb sequence of aerobatics. Although we saw a huge formation of 11 Corsairs at Thunder Over Michigan in Airshow Action 2019, this three-ship performance is almost as unique, with it being the largest gathering of Corsairs in Europe for quite a few years. Patrice Marchison and Eric Goujon performed stunning formation aerobatics in the Fighter Collection's F4U-1 from Duxford and the Flying Bull's F4U-4 based at Salzburg. Manoeuvres by the two-ship were interspersed by powerful flypasts from the Amical Jean-Baptiste Salis F4U flown by Edmond Salis. This is the sort of performance that Air Legend organises exceptionally well. Combinations of aircraft that don't usually fly together, performing sophisticated one-off displays that look every bit as well choreographed and as well rehearsed as those of any fully-fledged aerobatic team. The show's chronological story then continued with the Korean War and a CL-13B Sabre Mark VI, which had been due to fly with a P-51 Mustang until that aircraft went tech. The Sabre is owned and flown by Frederick Ackery and is the only Sabre currently flying in Europe. Ackery previously owned a Hawker Fury and then Vlado Lennox P-51D Mustang Moonbeam McSwine. After Lennox died in 2017, there was a concerted effort to bring Moonbeam McSwine back to America. Ackery accepted, but on one condition. He wanted an F-86 Sabre in return. The aircraft arrived in France in 2019 and made its European airshow debut later that year. This, however, was our very first chance to see the aircraft since it crossed the Atlantic. Air Legend's story of aviation history continued with a performance commemorating the Vietnam War, and you can see more of the whole show in a special 90-minute episode of Airshow Dispatches from This Is Flight. But this is where we alight, leave France behind, and linger a little longer on the theme of classic jets.
The Jet Warbird segment at the Northern Illinois Air Show in Waukegan provided the chance to see some very nice fly paths indeed from another F-86 Sabre, and perhaps most interestingly, a T-2 Buckeye. The Buckeye may date back to the 1950s, but it's still in operation today with the Hellenic Air Force. It was also used by the US Navy, being retired in 2008 and replaced with a T-45 Goshawk. The L-29 Delphine isn't the most unusual aircraft on the airshow circuit and neither is it the rarest, but it's still one we're going to look at in this programme, because at Antidotum Airshow Lezno in Poland, this example demonstrated one of the jet's more unique capabilities. It can operate from grass. This was the first time a jet aircraft had operated from the airfield at Lezno, and it just goes to prove the ethos of the Eastern Bloc Air Forces at that time. Cheap to make and hard to break, but more than adequate for the job at hand. Here we see another of the L-29's capabilities. It's the only purely jet-powered aeroplane capable of performing a stall turn. The aircraft comes from the Slovak company L-29SK, who offer air displays and passenger rides from their base at Zlina. Another classic jet at Antidotum Airshow Lezno was the PZL Milik SB Lim 2, a Polish two-seat training aircraft made by modifying single-seat MiG-15s to dual-seat MiG-15 UTI specifications. This was supposed to be a two-ship display that also included the Foundation's newly restored Lim 2, the single-seat Polish-built version of the SB Lim 2, which is the only single-seat Lim or MiG-15 currently flying in Europe. Sadly, although the new aircraft was perfectly flyable at the time of the show, it was unable to take part due to paperwork problems. It finally made its airshow debut in the second half of the summer of 2021, and hopefully it's an aircraft we'll be able to feature in future years. The next development of the MiG family was the MiG-17, and we'll take a quick look at this example flown by Randy Ball. It's a performance which we featured in Airshow Action 2019, and generally we don't like to feature the same thing several years running but our camera position out in front of the crowd and underneath the aerobatic box meant this footage was just too good to leave out. Here's an aircraft that hasn't flown for a while, 100 Squadron Royal Australian Air Force's English Electric Canberra TT-18. After more than 10 years on the ground, it took to the air again in 2021, and this is its first and only airshow appearance since then, wings over Illawarra. With the exception of NASA's modified WB-57s, it's the only Canberra in the world still flying. 
It was owned for many years by the Tamora Aviation Museum, but it, along with much of the museum's fleet of airworthy aircraft, was donated to the Royal Australian Air Force in January 2021 as part of a brand new heritage squadron. The museum still carries out much of the day-to-day -day operation and maintenance of the aircraft, but it now forms part of the 100th Squadron fleet, which also includes a Kitty Hawk, Sopwith Pup, Sabre, Hudson, Dragonfly, Windjeel, Meteor, Vampire, Boomerang, Wiraway, Mustang, two Spitfires and several others. As we segue from our classic jet segment into a sequence of special formations, we now turn to the A4 Skyhawk, which performed a special legacy flight along with an FG-1D Corsair at Waukegan. These aircraft are both owned by the Warbird Heritage Foundation based at Waukegan and the Corsair is a brand new restoration, having made its first post-restoration flight in March 2021. The A4 then performed some flypasts of its own, including one with pyrotechnics on the ground. One of the most interesting heritage flights of the year came at Air Venture. The gunship heritage flight featured an AC-130J Ghost Rider flying alongside perhaps the first dedicated gunship platform, an AC-47 Spooky. The formation was part of Air Venture 2021's focus on the US Air Force's Special Operations Command, and you can see the HC-130 and CV-22 role demonstration that supported that theme in part one of Airshow Action 2021, which focuses on the year's best military performances. Of course, we can't mention Oshkosh and Warbird formations without giving you a glimpse of this huge formation of T-34 Mentors arriving on the Tuesday. There are a great many impressive mass warbird arrivals and formations throughout the week, and here are a couple more of them.
The Wings of the North Air Expo provided a chance to see some interesting aircraft, including this three ship of naval fighters and bombers. Wings of the North's own TBM-3 Avenger and F4U-4 Corsair, along with the Dakota Territory Air Museum's FM-2P Wildcat. The Wings of the North Air Expo is not technically an air show, and aircraft fly within the standard rules of the air, but that didn't stop it from being a well-attended and interesting event, which this year attracted around 8,000 visitors per day, double what is usually expected. Here is a truly memorable gathering of warbirds from the Hunter Valley Air Show in Australia, a seven-ship Balbo which served as the finale to the show. Balbos take their name from the head of the Italian Air Force under the fascist dictator Benito Mussolini. Although his politics were questionable, he was an aviation trailblazer, leading several record-breaking large aircraft formations. By the late 1930s, any big formation was informally referred to as a Balbo, and today, creating a Balbo from all of the participating aircraft is a popular finale at major warbird-themed air shows. Among the participants in Hunter Valley's Balbo was the CA-13 Boomerang, Australia's first indigenous combat aircraft, which was developed over a period of only three months. So the aircraft was put together in a remarkable time. It also presented a chance to see another of 100 Squadron's aircraft, this time a Lockheed Hudson Mark III, which is seen here performing an impressive wingover. This aircraft has a fantastic performance in this particular weight regime. Obviously, it's not carrying full fuel, it's not carrying full. Several aircraft came from the Paul Bennett Air Show's hangar. Paul Bennett is one of Australia's foremost aerobatic pilots and is the leader of the Sky Aces aerobatic team, but he also displays such aircraft as the Avenger and T-28 Trojan. Now the full seven ship formation approaches. Excellent. 
Sticking with formations, there have been several new Warbird Airshow teams established over the past few years, and here are three of the latest British examples. The Gypsy Pair was created in 2019 and features Kevin Hale's Oster AOP6 and Simon Tilling's Chipmunk T10. The duo pays tribute to the heritage of the UK's Army Air Corps. Two chipmunks now, a chipmunk T10 in a Royal Air Force scheme and a T20 in Portuguese colours. The Portuguese Air Force still uses the chipmunk in the training role incidentally. These aircraft form the Vintage Pair, which takes its name from a Royal Air Force aerobatic team of the 1980s, which flew a chipmunk and vampire. This reimagined civilian version of the Vintage Pair was founded in 2019. But perhaps the most exciting new Warbird team, and indeed one of the most exciting new aerobatic teams of any kind in recent years, was the Ultimate Fighters, founded in 2019. In the last few years, Warbird operators in the UK have been permitted to start offering flights to paying passengers, and several new companies have been set up to offer this service. Cywell-based Ultimate Warbird flights is one of them, and during the summer they put their aircraft and pilots to good use on the airshow circuit. The team brings together John Gowdy and Andy Durston, who formerly flew for the Fireflies display team, as well as Richard Grace and Dave Pulliston, who used to fly for the Trig team. The Trig team was disbanded in 2018, and two new pilots were trained up for the Fireflies, allowing this quartet to focus on their new Warbird venture. The lead aircraft is P-47D Thunderbolt Nellie B, the only Thunderbolt currently flying outside North America. She's a fairly recent import herself, having been brought to Europe in 2018. In the slot position is TF-51D Mustang Contrary Mary, one of the aircraft the company uses to offer passenger rides. After some extraordinary four-ship formation aerobatics, the team's Spitfire Mark V and Hispano HA-1112M1L Bouchon set up for an opposing pass and tail chase sequence. The Hispano Bouchon is a post-war Spanish license-built version of the Messerschmitt ME109. Although the licensing agreement was signed in 1942, the type didn't enter service until after the war. This particular version actually dates back to the mid-1950s, so it's not a genuine Second World War aircraft. But the lack of true ME109s and a growing number of airworthy Bouchons in Europe means the type is often used to represent the 109 at Warbird themed airshows.
finally, the four aircraft regroup for a run and break to land. This fairly little-known team is called Classic Formation, and unlike those we've just seen, it's not a particularly new team. But it was such an enjoyable display that it's still worthy of inclusion. The team flies a DC-3 and three Beach 18s, so you might expect the display to be rather sedate. But nothing could be further from the truth, and several of the manoeuvres are actually inspired by Switzerland's national aerobatic team, Patouille Suisse. This remarkable formation change sees the Beach 18s on either side of the formation rapidly switching positions with each other. The aircraft are all owned by Hugo Matisse, and although they're dressed up as civilian aircraft, the DC-3 actually started out in life as a C-47A 45DL and served with the US Army Air Force. All three Beach 18s flew for the Royal Canadian Air Force. Here's one of the team's most impressive manoeuvres, and one of those inspired by the Patrice Suisse, the tunnel. Another of Europe's great warbird operators is the Salzburg-based Flying Bulls. They operate one of the Corsairs we saw earlier, a DC-6, Bo 105, Cobra and the aircraft we're about to see. The Flying Bulls brought four warbirds to Antidotum Air Show Lezno, which flew in various combinations throughout the weekend. P-51D Mustang Nookie Bookie 4 flew in formation with the group's P-38 Lightning, while their T-28B Trojan and B-25 Mitchell performed solo displays. Although the first two clips were filmed from the edge of the runway, most of this segment was filmed from the regular spectator area. This is the view that everybody in the crowd enjoys, they really do get a very close-up look at the action. That's just one of the reasons why the air show at Lezhno is revered by all of those lucky enough to have attended. It's not a particularly big air show, and neither is it hugely famous, but it certainly is one of the most intimate air show venues around. The event is extremely popular with pilots too. Teams are encouraged to use their imagination to stage some impressive one-off spectacles. In 2021, that included aircraft weaving around hot air balloons, breaking world records and flying inside a fireworks show launched from the ground. 
The Flying Bulls first attended with their T28 in 2020, but they were eager to return with a much bigger contingent this year. You can see more of them and all the other performers at Lejno in an hour-long episode of Airshow Dispatches from This Is Flight. Sadly, for one of them, the Antidotum Airshow 2021 would be their last ever flying display. Rainer Steinberger and the collection's T-28 were involved in a fatal crash while flying home from the show. As such, we present this sequence of the team's stunning sunset formation performance as a tribute to him. This performance was one of those truly special airshow moments, which will live long in the memories of all who attended. The Flying Bulls were supported by the Polish air race and aerobatic pilot Luke Cipiela in his Edge 540 in their opening fly past, and it was then the turn of the Warbirds to perform a quarter hour sequence of alternating fly pasts, loops, and rolls to close out the display. Another of this year's great airshow moments came at Thunder Over Michigan. The theme this year was Mitchell Madness and the organisers brought together an almost unprecedented 13 B-25 Mitchells to take part in the flying display. The B-25 is perhaps most famous for the Doolittle raids which we mentioned earlier, but it was used much more broadly than that, and the type saw service in every theatre of operations during the Second World War. Although primarily used as a medium bomber, reconnaissance, transport, trainer, gunship and maritime patrol versions were also produced. 21 nations operated the type across all its variants, with the last examples not being retired from active service until 1979. After their solo flybys, as many as eight of the 13 Mitchells joined up for a formation flypast, following which they split into two four-ship formations for the break to land. For 
the aim had been to host the largest gathering of B-25 since the type was retired from active service. This would have meant beating the show's own record of 15 aircraft set in 2007 and the national record of 20 aircraft set in 2012 at a reunion marking the 70th anniversary of the Doolittle Raid. With a few last-minute cancellations, the organisers managed to muster 14 aeroplanes, one of which sadly went tech on the Saturday morning, but all the rest were able to take part in the flying display. Finally, we'll showcase a selection of Spitfires, and nicely bridging the gap between the two aircraft is this formation from the Dakota Territory Air Museum, all aircraft we've seen in other combinations earlier in the programme. There's B-25J Betty's Dream, as well as the collections Spitfire and Hurricane. Perhaps the most keenly awaited Spitfire appearance of the year was the airshow debut of the Hangar 11 collection's former Soviet Air Force Spitfire Mark 9. The aircraft served with the Soviet Air Force under the Lend-Lease program, but was shot down in 1945 after just 29 flight hours. She was painstakingly restored at Biggin Hill and took to the air again in the autumn of 2020, wearing a unique Soviet colour scheme and carrying imitation bombs under the wings. She's the only ex-Soviet Spitfire currently flying, and made her airshow debut at the Midlands Air Festival 2021 in the hands of the collection's owner, Peter Teichmann. Peter was one of the UK's leading warbird display pilots in the 2010s, but retired from flying air shows in 2018. Clearly, the temptation of displaying his newly restored Spitfire was too much to resist and he came out of retirement for three events in 2021 to show off this gorgeous aircraft.
spécialisés dans les lieux de médecine And what a pleasure it was to see this aeroplane in the air again. This is Christophe Jacquard's Spitfire PR-19, which was badly damaged in a takeoff accident in 2017. The aircraft was sent to Duxford for repairs and flew again in the summer of 2020. This was its first airshow appearance since then. Finally, we'll close our programme with a display by one of the earliest versions of the Spitfire, the Mark 1A, in the hands of probably the most accomplished Spitfire display pilot in the world today, John Romain. This is the Imperial War Museum's Dunkirk veteran N3200 displaying at its home base of Duxford. It's a display that can be seen dozens of times every year here, but this perfect combination of man, machine and, for once, weather, made it too good to resist. That lyrical performance concludes the 2021 series of Airshow Action. If you haven't seen it already, remember to watch part one, which focuses on the year's best military performances. We'll see you again after the 2022 season, but until then, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>